everybody, Team Mimix here and today I want to show you a quick tip how to get color vibrance in DaVinci Resolve similar to the vibrance in Lightroom or Photoshop. What is important to know about this topic is that vibrance works different than saturation. But how does it work? Let me explain it quickly, it's really easy to understand. Fundamentally, both work to increase and decrease the intensity of colors in an image, but where saturation simply increases the intensity of all colors simultaneously, vibrance increases the intensity of less saturated colors more so than already saturated colors while also protecting skin tones and prevent posterization, which occurs when colors are so maxed out that color and shade transitions are destroyed. The image looks blocky and banned. So vibrance is a much more specific. It is more pushing the less saturated colors in your image. But in DaVinci Resolve, we don't have such a vibrance ruler or slider, but we have good solutions to imitate this effect. And the good thing is, we can adjust it more specific to our needs. We can do it more detailed, in other words. Let me show you what I mean. Look at this image. As you can see in the vector scope, the yellow and reddish parts are very saturated, almost touching my saturation max border. That's bad, because look at this image. There are very low saturated parts in it. Wouldn't it be nice to get this parts more saturated? Okay, enough of theoretical stuff. Let me show you two ways to get more color vibrance in DaVinci Resolve. The first way is to jump to your qualifier and turn the U and luminance switches off because we want to affect only the saturation. Now get your high and pull it down to something like this. Now press Command and H on Mac or Strong and H on Windows to highlight your selection. In my case, I don't see any highlighting because I'm much too high. All I have to do is to lower my high much more to the left, more to the low saturated parts. Something like this looks good to me. And now we should bring in a bit of high softness because we don't want a hard transitions between the low and high saturated regions. You should bring in some denoise too. I do it quickly and roughly just to demonstrate it. Now jump to your saturation slider on the primaries and increase the saturation. Don't be shy, push it up. If you see now that the high saturated colors are affected too, just lower the high on the saturation in the qualifier. If I now turn the node on and off, you can see that we only affect the low saturated colors in the image. And you can see that we introduce much more shades too. Our image becomes much more rich in shades without oversaturation. Okay. The other way of doing such an effect is using the SUT versus SUT curve. I make another color grade version and reset my second node. Now I got the SUT versus SUT curve and on the left side, this curve presents the low saturated parts and on the right side, the high saturated parts. If you look at this histogram curve behind this line, you can see that we have the most saturation on the right side, sorry, on the left side, in other words, on the low saturated range. This histogram curve shows us where we have the most saturation. It presents the saturation levels on your image. What I like to do now is selecting my skin tone in the mid-range, not too high and not too low, just to know where this region stays on my set versus set curve. Now I increase the low point in this curve up to the max. By clicking this little guy here, we get this editable splines. Just grab this and adjust the curve to something more like this to get a nice roll off. If you select the other point, you can adjust the spline too. All you have to do is to play around a bit to get a good looking roll off. You should keep an eye on the vector scope. 
as you can see, we only affected the low and mid-saturated parts of the image. By turning on and off this node, you can see the difference. Okay, now you know two ways how to achieve more color vibrance on your footage. Just have fun and play around by yourself. I recommend to do this adjustment right after the color correction before you creating your look. It should be part of your balancing out step. The first step is exposure correction and the second step is always balancing out your image. That's really important to understand. But that's not a story. Okay, I hope I could show you two ways to get more out of your footage and achieve a more bit more color vibrance. If you are interested in more content like this, please don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. Thanks for watching and listening. You all a great time. Bye.